my personal view is that string theory probably is on the right track toward a much better understanding of nature. We don't understand the theory very well, but there are too many things about it that circumstantially look right for me to believe that it isn't on the right track. Uh, there's the fact that um, standard quantum theory doesn't work with gravity, while string theory forces us to include gravity. There's the fact that the qualitative aspects of the elementary particles come out so neatly. There's the fact that the consistency of the theory hangs together so miraculously, overcoming so many potential pitfalls, any of which could have led to a hopeless contradiction, which instead were overcome always learning that the theory had a tighter structure than was understood before. Even my own work on unifying the string theories had to do with an attempt to prove that they were inconsistent, that one of them was inconsistent. And that proof actually instead led to a better insight about how the different theories were different sides of the same coin. So um, my personal view is that string theory knows a lot of things that humans don't. We'll be grappling with it for a long time. I think it knows a lot of deep secrets about our universe. I can't promise how far we'll get in understanding them. All we can do is to do the best we can. The biggest experimental discovery of our times, of modern times practically, certainly of the last 20 years, has been the discovery that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. Ever since the expansion of the universe was discovered in the early 20th centuries, where we found that the galaxies are flying apart since the Big Bang, it was generally assumed that because of gravitational forces that tend to pull the gra galaxies together, this acceleration would be slowing down. But finally, by around 1997, techniques developed enough so that the rate at which the expansion was slowing down could be measured, and it was discovered that the expansion of the universe is actually speeding up. Although we don't know for sure that this interpretation is right, the simplest interpretation is that the energy of the vacuum is not quite zero, but it's just slightly positive corresponding to an energy density that's roughly the rest mass of one atom in every cubic meter of space. Einstein had envisaged this idea of a non-zero vacuum energy modifying his theory, but um, he rejected it, and in his day there was no experimental evidence in favor of it. In modern times, though, it seems that actually the vacuum, empty, ordinary empty space seemingly with no matter at all, still has this tiny energy density equivalent to one atom per cubic meter, which in general relativity causes the acceleration of the universe to accelerate. It has the consequence, if it goes on this way, that galaxies we can see today will be out of sight in tens of billions of years. And it's made many physicists suspect that there are other things that have gone out of our sight even earlier because of essentially the same phenomenon. And thinking further, it's caused physicists to suspect that some of the regions out of sight might be quite different from the regions that we can see currently. String theory seems to, with our best understanding of today, allow for this possibility that in a vast, vast universe, there are different regions where the um, quantum state has adopted a different configuration, leading to different details of the elementary particles and to the possibility that um, part aspects of what we observe are not uniquely determined by the way the laws of nature are, but partly by which solution of the equations of nature happens to be relevant in the region of the universe that we're able to see currently. I don't know for sure whether this thinking is correct. I'm not even sure I like it. As a physicist, I would like to be able to calculate everything, including the mass of the electron and the lifetime of the muon and all kinds of things that listeners or viewers perhaps have heard or have not heard of from pencil and paper. But we weren't consulted when the universe was created. And this idea that aspects of reality as we see it depend on a solution of the equations rather than on the fundamental 
equations may well be the way the universe is. L'Organizzazione Europea per la Ricerca Nucleare, comunemente nota come CERN, è il più grande laboratorio di fisica delle particelle al mondo. Viene istituito a Ginevra nel 1954, allo scopo di creare un centro europeo in grado di eguagliare l'eccellenza dei laboratori statunitensi. Gli esperimenti condotti negli anni 50 e 60 all'interno degli acceleratori del CERN spalancano le porte della fisica a nuove prospettive. Gli scienziati osservano le collisioni tra fasci di particelle ad alta energia e scoprono l'esistenza di particelle elementari fino ad allora sconosciute. Queste scoperte danno il via agli studi sulle loro proprietà e interazioni. Dai tempi della sua fondazione, il CERN è stato dotato di acceleratori sempre più sofisticati, che oggi compongono una catena di strumenti in grado di portare un fascio di particelle a energie sempre più elevate. L'ultimo di questi è il Large Hadron Collider, entrato in funzione nel settembre del 2008. Si tratta del più grande e potente acceleratore di particelle mai realizzato. 27 km di tunnel sotterraneo ospitano un macchinario progettato con una precisione straordinaria, capace di accelerare protoni e ioni pesanti fino a una velocità molto vicina a quella della luce. Da questo sofisticato strumento i ricercatori si aspettano di ottenere una risposta ai quesiti fondamentali della fisica contemporanea. Da quale aspetto avesse l'universo nei primi istanti della sua formazione, a quale sia l'origine della massa, all'esistenza di particelle supersimmetriche. I teorici delle stringhe oggi guardano a queste eccezionali tecnologie sperando che siano in grado di verificare le loro previsioni e che consentano di giungere un giorno a una comprensione più profonda degli affascinanti misteri della natura. Looking ahead, one of the most important questions for fundamental physics is what is going to come out of the new accelerator, the Lar Large Hadron Collider at the European Laboratory CERN near Geneva, and we're all very excited about what they might discover. One of the big questions is whether the LHC will discover supersymmetry. Discovering supersymmetry would mean finding new elementary particles, for example, a supersymmetric partner of the electron that would have the same electric charge as the electron, but, but will but would lack its magnetic properties. This would be a kind of modern version of what happened in the 1930s when it was found that the electron had a twin with opposite electric charge. And in the 20s, when it was found that the electron actually had different spin states. So maybe the LHC, if we're lucky, will find that uh, the electron also has a spinless cousin. And if it does, that'll put our understanding of nature on a completely new level. And Speaking personally, I'd be delighted because in my career, maybe half of my papers have involved supersymmetry in one way or another. Supersymmetry and string theory have grown up together. Supersymmetry is an important facet of string theory, and there's at least a hope that the LHC will prove that it's correct. Speaking personally, I think that string theory probably is on the right track toward giving us a much deeper understanding of nature. And part of the reason I think so is that it seems to contain so many secrets about the mathematical and physical world, even in areas that string theorists didn't anticipate applying string theory to at all. In many areas of physics, the problem is that the equations are known, but they're too hard to solve. 
that's is really the usual problem of physics, except in areas of fundamental physics where you're trying to discover new equations of nature. An example is in heavy ion collisions. A heavy ion is the nucleus of an atom, such as a lead atom or a uranium atom. Physicists at the Brookhaven Laboratory in New York, and in the next few years also at the CERN Laboratory in Europe, collide together heavy ions, observe the collisions that come out, which are very complicated with thousands of particles coming out. And although the equations that are supposed to describe it are known, they're hopelessly hard to solve. String theory, however, led to an amazingly new technique for solving these equations. Where these equations, even though they don't involve gravity at all, they involve ordinary elementary particle forces, are studied by comparing the real world in a situation where gravity is unimportant to a different description where gravity would be important and modeling the droplet produced in a heavy ion collision by an evaporating black hole. So this is a striking success where string theory knows about um, equations encountered by physicists seemingly in other areas and gives remarkable insights which have caused string theory to be an important tool in explorations of heavy ion physics and other things have happened in other areas such as fundamental investigations of quantum phase transitions which are important in studying states of condensed matter. In a way, I think the most significant criticism of string theory by other physicists may be that it's too ambitious, too big a step beyond what we know, and too hard to get the experimental clues that would be necessary to work it out correctly. Critics who take that point of view may even be partly correct, for all I know. Maybe we will always be in the situation of having an extremely rich theory that gives us tantalizing hints of something we don't fully understand. Um, a widespread view among my colleagues, I think, would be agnosticism. Um, many colleagues would acknowledge that interesting and significant ideas have come out of string theory, but at the same time, um, since the reasons to believe that string theory might be on the right track are largely circumstantial, they would remain agnostic about whether string theorists are simply clever people who have come up with significant ideas about this and that, or are on the right track to a better theory of nature. Personally, I think that the circumstantial indications are convincing. What convinces me most is that the theory hangs together too miraculously to be an accident. It's generated too many um, good ideas about different areas of geometry and physics to be coincidental. Um, it forces quantum gravity upon us while standard quantum theories make it impossible to include gravity. And it qualitatively gives us in an astonishingly effortless way, a good rough draft of the world of elementary particles.